This right here is Scott Stevens, a man who is arguably the best hitter in NHL history. Scott Stevens would single-handedly force the NHL to create new rules, simply due to the sheer amount of careers that he would end during his tenure. Also YouTube, the clips I'm showing are not the players being injured, please don't demonetize. Now, many hockey fans may remember Stevens for these massive hits, mainly the Paul Correa and Eric Lindros incidents, or perhaps Stanley Cup runs. But what if I were to tell you that Scott Stevens was involved in the most controversial trade we have ever seen. A trade that was so bizarre, it had to be settled in a court. A trade that would single-handedly change NHL history. The brand new McDavid Collector's Box has just hit the stores, or you have great odds of pulling a McDavid the Cup Auto, or perhaps a 1516 Series 1 tin, which keep in mind sells for about 600 bucks. The same tin, you could potentially pull a McDavid Young Guns Rookie. Link is down below. Back in 1974, the Washington Capitals would be the newest expansion team. And even though they endured some of the worst seasons in league history, all this pain and suffering would culminate to the 1982 draft. Because at pick number 5, they would draft Scott Stevens. And this right here was a massive turning point for the team. As Scott Stevens was one of the most complete defensemen the game has ever seen. Not only was he a physical mutant who would punish the opposition shift after shift, not only was he putting up points, but he was one of the best shutdown defenders in the game. Him being so desirable would lead to history-altering drama. In the 1990 offseason, the Washington Capitals were desperately trying to re-sign Scott Stevens, but they were having some troubles. Because this team was brutal for their first decade of existence, they were not in a great financial situation. And keep in mind, at this time, there was no salary cap, so contract negotiation for big time players was a big ordeal. Meant that this Capitals team was struggling to budget in a contract for Stevens. And this right here would make the St. Louis Blues salivate from the mouth. Because after the Capitals would fail to negotiate, the St. Louis Blues would swoop in like a hawk, as they knew that their offer could not be matched by Washington. And not only did St. Louis make the biggest offer sheet in NHL history, but they would make Stevens the highest paid defenseman in the league, and one of the highest paid defensemen in NHL history. Because here's the thing, when a young player is coming off their initial contract or contracts, they enter what is called restricted free agent status. We're technically their free agent in that they can sign with other teams, but their current team still holds their rights. Meaning, if another team does offer an RFA contract, their current team can match the offer and retain the player, or decide to not match the offer, but they will gain a bunch of draft picks and compensation. And with the $5.1 million contract they would give Stevens, which is about $12.5 million in today's money, they would owe the Capitals 5 first round picks. You heard that right, 5 first round picks. And remember this tidbit because it will come up again later. With that being said, the St. Louis Blues already had guys like Brett Hall, one of the best Best goal scorers in NHL history, who with Stevens would have an 86 goal season, Adam Oates, one of the best passers in NHL history, Curtis Joseph and Nett. So when you add a guy like Scott Stevens into the picture, this team was set up to become a dynasty. They would get upset in the second round in Stevens' first season, but this team now had their stars locked in and were ready to make championship runs year after year. But in my goodness, we would witness the incident. After the Scott Stevens offer sheet drama, Ron Karen, the GM of the St. Louis Blues, became trigger happy as this man would shock the hockey world. Nearly one year to the date of signing Stevens, Ron Karen would concoct a master plan to steal the New Jersey Devils' young star in Brendan Shanahan through the offer sheet process. So the fact that Ron Karen would make offer sheets in back-to-back -back off seasons was unprecedented, as he would eventually sign Brendan Shanahan to a three-year three million dollar deal. So, not a big deal, right? They give the Devils some first round draft picks, but they now had superstar veterans and two of the top young stars in the league. Except, they didn't own their first round picks, as they had to give away five first round picks to Washington for signing Scott Stevens. Meaning, what Ron Karen did was illegal, and as a result, he would try to pivot this illegal signing to instead a trade with the Devils. However, the Devils weren't buying what Karen was selling, and they would end up rejecting all of his proposals. 
And this situation got so absurd that they would have to bring it to court to get settled by arbitrators. So technically this went from a signing to a court mandated trade. And the outcome, well the outcome, it was hilarious. As they would rule that yes, the Blues could take Shanahan from New Jersey, but in return, they had to give the devil Scott Stevens, the man they sold their soul for, on top of a first round pick and $4 million in cash. And as a result, not only did St. Louis fail to win a Stanley Cup, but Scott Stevens would lead the Devils to three Stanley Cups. The man that got away from an illegal attempt to con the free agency system. But the story doesn't stop here. No, Ron Karen, who was irate about losing Scott Stevens, and I kid you not, would offer sheet Scott Stevens again. But this time, the Devils would match his offer and retain Stevens. But here's the thing, after offer sheeting Stevens for a second time, Lou Lamorello, the godfather, was beginning to think something was suspicious about Ron Karen. How was this man continually launching successful offer sheets? Something can't be right, where the NHL would discover that they were in fact tampering with the negotiation process, as they would discover that Ron Karen was reaching out to players way before they were legally allowed. But as a result of this scandal, Ron Karen would be fired, and the Blues would receive a $500,000 fine and lose a future first round pick. Also on a side note, do not mess with Lou Lamorello. It will not end well, and this man handles his business like Tony Soprano. And you might be thinking, at this point, that was a lot to take in, this is an absurd story. But what if I were to tell you, we are still not done, not even close. Remember when I said that the initial offer sheet made by the Blues to acquire Stevens would make him the highest paid defenseman in the league? Well, this signing would create an immense domino effect. In today's game, it has become very common to see young players sign massive contracts. But back in the day, it was outrageous to see teams pay young stars this amount of money. So when you consider that Stevens, who was 24, was now making more money than Hall of Famers like Ray Bork, Al McInnes, Paul Coffey, Brian Leach, who were all older and more proven than Scott Stevens, and this offer sheet signing would lead to star players starting to demand way more money. And when owners aren't happy with their profits, what do they do? I even found detailed law school papers explaining the tension between the players and owners right after the Scott Stevens contract. Because around this time, the NHL would just so happen to recruit who else but Gary Bettman. And within three years of the initial domino falling, we would see the 1994 lockout. And what was the purpose of this lockout? Ownership was not happy with the massive contracts that stars were demanding, as they wanted to stop this free agency madness, on top of adding the salary cap. So basically, the NHL would hire Gary Bettman in an attempt to put a stop to the quote-unquote escalating salaries. But the tensions of the 1994 lockout would culminate to the 2005 lockout, because in 2005, we would see the implementation of the salary cap. Now, did the Scott Stevens offer sheet debacle single-handedly create the salary cap? No, but it did spearhead a domino effect, which would lead to two lockouts. Like seriously, you could make the argument that the Ron Caron offer sheet would eventually lead to three lockouts. Also, I'm not trying to throw shade on Ron, the guy seemed to be a very savvy GM, but he definitely did cause some madness. But no, it doesn't stop there. Believe it or not, it gets even crazier. As the butterfly effect of this trade runs much deeper. Think about the optics here. If Scott Stevens doesn't get awarded to New Jersey by an arbitrator, this man never faces off against Paul Correa in the Cup Finals. Therefore, the most infamous hockey hit does not happen, Paul Correa's career doesn't get derailed, and hockey history is changed. If Stevens doesn't end up in New Jersey, he doesn't match up against Eric Lindros in the Eastern Conference Finals. And this hit doesn't happen, as he would still be playing in the Western Conference. Therefore, Lindros goes from one of the biggest what-ifs in NHL history to continuing his Hall of Fame career. But guess what? We are still not done. With the courts ruled that St. Louis basically had to trade Scott Stevens for Brendan Shanahan, the Blues, who were desperately looking to replace Stevens, would eventually trade Shanahan for Chris Pronger. Okay, you still with me here? A decade later, the St. Louis Blues would trade Chris Pronger to Edmonton for a deal surrounding Eric Brewer. They would trade Eric Brewer for a 2011 third round pick. And who did they select? Jordan freaking Bennington. Jordan Bennington, ladies and gentlemen, the same Bennington 
who would basically single-handedly carry a bottom St. Louis Blues team to the playoffs, where the Blues would win their first cup in franchise history. So nearly 30 years after Ron Caron was so close to making a dynasty, this trade tree would result in Jordan Bennington. I almost made this video without mentioning it. So a big shout out to Tom Franklin from the St. Louis Game Time. And yes, I know that butterfly effect videos come across as abstract, you know, a big what if, but the Scott Stevens saga is hands down one of the most absurd NHL sagas. You know what? It is actually the most absurd saga I have ever heard in my life. And without a doubt, would create one of the craziest domino effects we have ever seen. And as always, thanks for watching.